Hi, my name is Miss Kinner, and today we're going to talk about the structure and formulas of hydrocarbon chains. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about the shape around carbon. And I just wanted us to review and then to look at some new concepts. So if we think about the very simplest hydrocarbon, it was just methane, CH4. And if we look at the shape around carbon there, when carbon likes to make four bonds, so it's going to bond to four hydrogens to make methane, and it spreads those hydrogens out into the three-dimensional space. And the bond angles here are bigger than 90 degrees. They're actually 109.5 degrees, and they spread out to use 3D space for those four hydrogens to make what's called a tetrahedron. So it almost looks like a little pyramid and then it's got the top of the tetrahedron. So it spreads out even in four directions um, to use that three-dimensional space. So if we think about how what happens when carbon starts to bond to other carbons, because of that shape, if we look at carbon bonding to other carbon atoms, they actually look like the carbon backbone wants to make a zigzag shape. Because we can spin those single bonds, we can twist it other ways, but the preferred way is actually a zigzag shape. And so sometimes you might see carbon chains drawn in straight lines on a paper, but that's really just to keep it simple because it's easy to type straight across a line. Um, on a computer screen, and it's not as easy to show the right structure. So sometimes the shorthand is shown in a straight line, but keep in mind that the carbons actually want to zigzag like this because each carbon is actually tetrahedral. So when we go ahead and we put all the hydrogens in, it looks like this and it's tetrahedral about each carbon atom. So here, this one's got its two hydrogens zigzagged up and these two hydrogens down um, and so on. So that it actually takes on this three-dimensional shape. And again, it's free to rotate around the single bond, but this conformation is not preferred these electron clouds of the two atoms get too close together. And so that way is not going to be preferred and it'll twist and it'll give a preferred zigzag conformation. So that's what those carbon atoms actually want to do in a carbon chain. We're also going to look at isomers. And in our isomers today, we're going to try to take a carbon off of the end of the chain and we're going to try to put it somewhere else in the chain. Now I took it from this end, and so I would try to put it elsewhere in the chain. Now I could try the opposite end to see if I will get a new isomer. So I could put it here, and then where I originally took it from, I could put the hydrogen atom. And at first it might seem like this is something new, but again, we can rotate around single bonds, and it's just the same four carbon zigzag chain that we had before. So actually, when we remove a carbon off of the end of the chain and we try to make a structural isomer, to be a structural isomer and to have a whole new structure, we actually need to remove, or excuse me, place the branch somewhere in a middle carbon. This is our only middle carbon here. So let's remove a hydrogen from a middle carbon, place this in the middle, and then we will go ahead and put the hydrogen that we had to take off the middle carbon off on the end. And so now we actually have a structural isomer of our original chain because we have this new group, or excuse me, this carbon that we took from the end is now a branch coming off of the middle of the chain. And so if I get my straight chain, actually have to make one out of what I had remaining here. 
here was my four carbon straight chain. And now here is my four carbon chain with a branch. And so we would say that this straight chain, N-butane, and this isobutane, this isomer that has a branch on it, we would say that these two are isomers. We would say that butane and isobutane are isomers of each other. They both have the four carbon atoms. And if we counted up all the hydrogen atoms, those match right now too. They both have 10 hydrogen atoms. So we want you to keep in mind that carbon actually likes to be zigzag in its real structure. Now we're going to look at how to draw structures and write formulas of some hydrocarbons. And we're going to use two different isomers to do our examples. We'll try butane and isobutane. Butane has four carbons, so we can draw those four carbons. And we know that carbon itself wants to always make four bonds. So once we get it bonded to the other carbon atoms, we have to fill in the rest of the chain with hydrogen atoms. This is a hydrocarbon. So all carbons and hydrogens. And then we can start to condense this a little bit and notice that of the in carbon, there are three hydrogens. And then on middle carbons, there are two hydrogens. And then three out on the end again. And we might condense that a little bit more. And after we're drawing the carbon backbone, we might say, well, three hydrogens on the end, two in every middle carbon, and three out on the end. And we kind of use those lines as a spot to write our hydrogens. And it ends up being a little more condensed because we haven't drawn the three lines between the four carbons. We could condense that down just a little bit more. Sometimes you see the CH2s in the middle counted up. There are two of them and put in parentheses. And so those are just different ways of drawing the formula. Now, one way to represent the 3D shape being zigzag is what's called a line angle formula. And so you'll write three lines for the three CC bonds. There was one, two, three carbon-carbon bonds. You end up with one, two, three lines. The three lines represent the fact that there are one, two, three, four carbons in the chain. And so that can be a little bit confusing. You have to know that even the endpoint represents a carbon. So you draw just three lines to represent the four carbon chain because there are three of the CC bonds. Just making sure you're counting the endpoint as a spot for a carbon. So if we go over to isobutane, we can draw our four carbon chain. And then to draw an isomer of that, we need to erase a carbon from the end of the chain and find a central spot to add it. We can't add it to one of the ends of the chain or it'll just end up as a four carbon chain again. So we'll add it to the center and then we'll fill in with hydrogen atoms. So that every carbon has four bonds because we know carbon likes to form four bonds. And then we can start to condense that a little bit. And notice that all these in carbons have three hydrogens on them. We could draw it without those lines, just a little more condensed across that main chain. And if we wanted to use some parentheses to condense this some more, you might see it drawn with two of those CH3s, one coming here and here, and combined into a parentheses. 
So that's just a way of condensing that structure a little bit more. And you might see a line angle structure where here are the three carbons in the main chain and here's the fourth carbon of the branch. And so if we're looking at different formula types, these first two formulas are fairly expanded formulas. There's some of the more expanded types of formulas. And then we get the formulas that are a little bit more condensed. And so these are some ways of condensing the formulas. The line angle formulas start to show us the actual geometry about the carbon atoms. And then we're going to talk about something called molecular formulas and empirical formulas. And just to introduce you to the idea, let's look at them here. The molecular formula counts up how many of each type of atom there are. So we had four carbons. It counts up the hydrogens. So there are 10 hydrogens. We've actually got the same formula for isobutane. We've also got four carbons and 10 hydrogens for isobutane. So we have the same molecular formula. An empirical formula looks at simplifying this. So are both numbers divisible by the same number? Well, they're both divisible by two. So we can simplify this to C2H5 for the empirical formula. And same thing over here, C4H10 actually simplifies to an empirical formula of C2H5. So the empirical formula is the simplest version of the formula, and the molecular formula is often some multiple of that empirical formula. And here, it's multiplied by two um, to get from the empirical formula to the molecular formula. I think of it as some multiple of that empirical formula. So there's lots of different ways to write formulas of hydrocarbons. Now to look at their 3D structure again, here was that straight chain butane on the left, and we're seeing that it's actually a zigzag structure, which is really a lot more like its line angle formula. And the isobutane kind of has this V shape and then the branch coming off of it. So that their true shape is in these zigzag formulas that are better represented in the line angle formulas. So let's use some more examples to look at empirical versus molecular formulas. For example, sometimes carbons like to bond in rings. So what if we put five carbons in a ring? Now each carbon still needs to have four total bonds. So these carbons each have two hydrogens coming off of them. Now again, this can have a line angle formula and it really just looks like a pentagon. This is actually called cyclopentane because it does look like a pentagon where each point is a carbon atom. So you have to know that each point represents a carbon atom and that each of those carbons should have its necessary two hydrogens. So if we look for molecular formula here, we have five carbons. Each carbon has two hydrogens, so we have 10 hydrogens. That would be its molecular formula. It's the sum of the atoms that make up the formula in the compound. But if we try to simplify that, we could look for an empirical formula. So we could go, okay, how can we simplify C5H10? Well, they're both divisible by five. So its empirical formula is actually C H2. So we have an empirical formula of CH2 and a molecular formula of C5H10. 
Well, let's think of other ways that we can bond five carbons in a row. Now, if we fill in with all the hydrogens, we'll actually end up with C5H12. But I wonder if there's not another way to match up that molecular formula. At C5H12, we call this saturated. It is filled to capacity with hydrogen atoms. When it's saturated, it has all single bonds. So since we have entirely single bonds here, this would be a saturated hydrocarbon. Well, what if we got rid of a couple of those hydrogens and we know carbon still needs to make its four bonds. So what if we replace this with a double bond where we got rid of the two hydrogens, replace it with a double bond. Now it's no longer saturated. Now, because we have a single bond, whenever you have a double or triple bond, you are unsaturated. So this compound is unsaturated. It's not filled to capacity with hydrogen atoms. There are these two spots where hydrogen atoms would normally be found where they're not. So it is not completely saturated with hydrogen atoms. So we see double or triple bonds, we call it unsaturated. But let's look at that molecular formula. We have five carbons, and if we check, we have 10 hydrogens. So we actually have the same empirical molecular formulas. We have that CH2 for that empirical formula and that C5H10 for that molecular formula, but we have very different structures. So hydrocarbons can have um, the same molecular formula, even the same empirical formulas and very um, different structures. Um, it's worth looking at at least you know, just kind of one more hydrocarbon. Let's look at one more ring. How about a cyclohexane that looks like a hexagon? It's good to look at things like cyclopentane and cyclohexane because there are tons of these five and six membered rings in nature. So we see a lot of these in biology, biological systems and the molecules that we study in biology. And again, we're supposed to know that each of those points is a carbon and that each carbon must be connected to two hydrogens. And so if we go ahead and do that, we have six carbons and we actually have 12 hydrogens. So that's our molecular formula. Well, what about an empirical formula? Well, we can take our C6H12 and they're both divisible by six we actually end up with CH2 for an empirical formula here too. So our empirical formulas were the same for cyclopentane and for cyclohexane. So these hydrocarbon rings that are all um, singly bonded actually have the same empirical formula CH2 because for every carbon in the ring, there are two hydrogens. That kind of makes sense. Um, so we can kind of make sense of structures by studying um, some of those empirical formulas. So hopefully now you will be able to decode a lot of information about hydrocarbon structures and formulas that you encounter.